Hi everybody, this is part 2 of my 3 videos on the topic of lease modification in the books of the lessee as per IFRS 16 or in day 116. In my earlier video, I covered the concept of lease modification, how it is different from lease remeasurement and also explained the accounting treatment. In this video, I will be taking up a simple solved example that will help you to comprehend the accounting treatment that was discussed in the earlier video. Before going into this video, it will be great if you watch the earlier one so that you are clear on the concept and have an idea about the accounting treatment. Before we get into the example, I would like to do a quick recap of the accounting treatment. So, when there is a lease modification, after assessing whether the contract is still a lease or not, you need to check if there is an increase in scope. If there is an increase in scope, then you need to check whether the increase in consideration is commensurate with the standalone price of the right of use of that asset. If it is, then you cannot club this lease with your existing lease you need to record it as a separate lease. If it is a decrease in scope or lease term, then you need to reduce the lease liability as well as the ROU asset proportionately. And any difference is to be taken to the PNL account. Any other kind of lease modification, you need to remeasure the lease liability using the re revised discount rate. Adjust this increase or decrease in lease liability in the ROU assets account. All right, with that base, let us start the simple example. Miss X leases an area of 3,500 square meters for 10 years at an annual rent of 50,000 per annum, payable at the end of the year. Miss X's incremental borrowing rate is 5% per annum. At the start of the sixth year, the lesser and lessee agreed to amend the annual rental from 50,000 to $65,000 per annum, considering inflation. The incremental borrowing rate at the beginning of year 6 is 7% per annum. Is this a lease remeasurement or a lease modification? What is the accounting entry that will be passed at the beginning of year 6? So let's make a quick summary. Year 1, year 6. The scope of the lease in year 1 was 3,500 square meters. The lease term is... 10 years. The lease rent is $50,000 per annum payable at the end of the year. The discount rate is 5%. What is it in year 6? In year 6, the scope remains the same at 3,500 square meters. The annual rent has increased from 50000 to 65000 per annum. The incremental borrowing rate is 7%. What is missing? The lease term. The lease term has not changed, but because we are now in year 6, instead of 10 years, it will be 5 years. Okay, with this summary, let us start solving. So, the solution, the first part of the question, is this a lease remeasurement or a lease modification? What do you think? So, as you can see over here, the annual rent was fixed in the original contract at 50000 Later on, due to inflation, they made a change to the consideration that was in the original contract. Therefore, it is a lease modification and not a lease remeasurement. This is a lease modification as there is a change to the consideration stated in the original lease contract. So, our solution in the will be in the form of journal entries. Working note 1, lease liability at the beginning of year. Okay, the discounting factor at the beginning of year 1 is 5%. We know that the rent is paid at the end of the year. So, I will be calculating the present value using the annuity factor. I have explained calculation of present value using the annuity factor in my video on how to calculate present value. When you use this method, you will find that there is a minor rounding off difference as compared to the present value that you would get had you calculated the discounted cash flow year after year. 1 to 10 years 
annual rent. Cash flow, as we know, is 50,000 per annum. Annuity factor at 5% is 7.7217. The amount I get is 386,085. Now, this is the present value of the lease liability that needs to be recorded at the time of lease recognition. Now, the next working note is I want to know what is the present value of the lease liability at the end of year 5. That is when the lease modification is happening. So, my working note 2 is calculation of closing balances of lease liability. So, the year we do to 5 because we want to know the closing balance at the end of year 5. The opening balance of the lease liability we take from the earlier note. Interest is payable at the rate of 5%. Repayment is 50,000 which comes from the earlier working note and our closing balance is opening balance plus interest minus repayment. The opening balance in year 2 is the closing balance and we can copy the calculation. All of this can then be copied right up till year 5. Okay, so we now we know what is the value of the lease liability at the beginning of year 6. This is the one that now needs to be modified. Let us now assess the modification itself. What is this modification? Is it an increase in scope? No. Is it a decrease in the scope or lease term? No. It is an increase in the lease consideration. In case there is any modification that is neither an increase in scope nor a decrease in scope or lease term, what we need to do is remeasure the lease liability at the revised discount rate and then adjust this amount in the ROU asset. Our working note 3. Revised lease liability at the beginning of year 6. What comes under year? We are in year 6. We have to go till year 10. 1, 2, 5. It is the annual rent. The cash flow, there is an increase in the consideration. 65,000 and not 50,000 anymore. The revised discounting factor, as you can see, is 7%. The annuity factor is 4.1%. Zero, zero, 002. If you are uncomfortable calculating the annuity factor, please follow the traditional method of calculating the discounted cash flow using the discounting factor for each year. You will get an answer with minor rounding off difference. So the discounted cash flow is 266,513. The difference between the two is 50,041. This is what I will account for. So, the date is the beginning of next year and there is an increase in lease liability, which means lease liability is to be credited. The debit goes to ROU asset account debit. The value is 50,041 to lease liability account credit. So, this is the accounting entry that gets passed. Let us look at another example and this time the lease modification is not an increase in consideration but a decrease in scope. Miss X leases an area of 3,500 square meters for 10 years at an annual rent of 50,000 per annum payable at the end of the year. Miss X's incremental borrowing rate is 6% per annum. At the start of the sixth year, the lesser and lessee agree to reduce the scope to 2,000 square meters. The incremental borrowing rate at the beginning of year 6 is 7% per annum. The annual rent is now $40,000 per annum. How should the said modification be accounted for? So if you look carefully, whenever there is a decrease in scope, you will usually see a resulting decrease in consideration as well. So from the accounting point of view, these are considered as two different types of these modifications. Let us go through how this needs to be accounted. So let us make a summary. The scope in year 1 is 3500 square meters. The lease term is 10 years. The lease rent is 50,000 per annum and the discount rate is 6%. In year 6, 
scope has reduced to 2000. The lease term is now 5 years reduced by half not because there has been a reduction in the lease term as per the original contract no it is just because five years have lapsed already the rent has also reduced to 40,000 per annum and there is a change in the interest rate let us see what is the question how should the said modification be accounted for so the solution is an accounting entry we now go to our working notes. So our working note 1 is lease liability at the beginning of year 1. Okay, so the year is 1 to 10. It's annual rent and the amount that was paid initially is 50,000. The annuity factor is at the rate of 6%. The annuity factor is 7.3601. As I've said before, if you're more comfortable, please continue to calculate the discounting factor for each year to arrive at the present value. The present value is 368,005. Now we go on to the next working note and that is to calculate the lease liability as of the beginning of year Six. Calculation of closing balances of lease liability. As we did before, we take the present value. Interest rate is 6%. Repayment can be taken from here. The closing balance is opening balance plus interest minus repayment. The opening balance of the next day is the closing balance. And we can just copy that. The present value of the lease liability at the beginning of 6th year is 210,619. Similarly, let us find out what is the balance of the ROU asset at the end of the 5th year. Working note 3 is the closing balances of ROU asset. The years 0 to 5 at the beginning, the ROU asset would have been the same as the lease liability. The yearly depreciation would have been the value divided by 10. Give that across. The closing balance, the opening balance minus the depreciation. So our ROU asset at the beginning of year 6 is 184,003. So now we have the lease liability as well as the ROU asset as on the date of the lease modification. What do we do when there is a decrease in scope? What we need to do is to reduce the ROU asset and the lease liability proportionately and any difference is to be taken to the profit and loss account. Right. Now over here you see it is not just the scope that is decreasing. The consideration is decreasing. Discounting rate is increasing. What we need to find out what is the amount of the change that is attributable only to the decrease in the scope. How do we do that? Let us first take ROU asset. If 184,000 is the value of 3,500 square feet, what is the value of 2,000 square feet? So how do we calculate the decreased value of the ROU asset? We just need to look at how much is decreased. It is now 2000 and it was earlier 3500. So if the value of 3005 square meters is 184,000, what is the value of 2000? So it is equal to this multiplied by 2000 divided by 3500. The reduced scope of the contract is valued at 105,144. Now we need to see how much is the reduced value of lease liability. Again, please remember attributed only to the decrease in scope. 210,619 is for 3,500 square meters. For 2,000, it will be divided by 3,500. 120,350. Okay, so what will our accounting entry be over here? ROU asset will be credited as it is reducing. Lease liability is also reducing, so that will be debited. Lease liability account debit to ROU asset account credit. Lease liability reduces by 90,625. ROU asset reduces by 78,858. The difference goes to the PNL account 11,407. Okay, so this is the entry that you pass for the decrease in scope. But that is not the only lease modification. 
there has also been a decrease in the consideration and there has been an increase in the incremental borrowing rate these put together comes under other modifications and when there are other modifications we remeasure the lease liability using the revised discount rate and make any adjustments needed to the rou assets account so our next working note is revised lease liability at the beginning of year 6 the revised discount rate is 7% so it's no longer 1 to 10 it is 1 to 5 the particulars is annual rent what is the revised cash flow let's go back to our summary the revised annual rent is 40000 per year the annuity factor at 7% for 5 years is 4.1002 so the discounted cash flow so this is what the revised lease liability is considering all the changes considering the decrease in scope considering the decrease in rent so this is what your lease liability should look like post lease modification your existing lease liability is your original lease liability which you have reduced by this accounting entry so 12354 is your existing lease liability in the books you need it to be 164008 and therefore there is an increase in lease liability which means lease liability gets credited adjustment is made in the rou assets account so your second entry that gets passed is rou assets account debit to lease liability account and the value is 43654 so there that is your solution okay that brings us to the end of the video i hope that this examples that i have discussed have helped you understand the accounting treatment better this video will definitely help you to solve more complicated examples that will combine different types of lease modifications i will be taking up such a complicated example in my next video As always all your comments your suggestions for improvements and your queries are welcome kindly share them with me i really hope that you found this video helpful bye